Welcome to the Pat Mayo Experience, presented by DraftKings 2021 Golf Major Betting Preview. We're going to go through each of the four majors, try to get some winners out of it. Didn't really work out last year, did it, Jeff Einberg? Uh, no, it didn't, but I think in due time, everything came into focus, Pat. Uh, we got better numbers than they went off at, just those guys didn't win. They didn't win, but there were three majors played last year. I had two winners, so I, I have no complaints about the 2020 major season. That's absolutely fair. Um, please, everyone out there, spread around the show. Smash the like button to the episode. In the comment section, go through all four majors and pick your winner for each of the four majors. I'm curious what conclusions that you guys end up coming to that. If you're listening to this on the audio podcast, on Apple Podcasts, please rate and review five stars okay uh you can find like the entire intro to the season all the picks always up on mayo media network's youtube page please subscribe to mayo media network on youtube if you like golf if you like football if you like sports if you like nonsense if you like tim and august tim and august it's not my name but people can find you on mayo media network yes this they can so tim when you were going through the majors for this year uh, did you have any like wonky off the board picks? Do you think? Uh, I don't. I don't know that anything is too wonky or off the board. I've learned over time that when in doubt, pick the best players. They tend to win major championships. We saw it this year and uh, years previous. We don't have as many upset winners as we had twenty years ago. It seems like that. That's rare. Like Danny Willett stands out to me in my mind as like the only real like upset winner we've had in like the last several major championships so uh no i don't think i have any weird or off the board picks I mean, maybe i'll change my mind but i don't think so there been will it and Jim, woodland and, and walker. walker all kind of went off walker sim- walker like week of price range all very similar right 60 to 80 week of yeah like what was lowry's lowry was like 50 I think there were some earlier nice numbers. I think there was a bit of steam sure. by some sharp touts, not me. Or, or no, th- there's a lot of steam on Lowry. Really like, had he, he's steam Irish. too, though. Yeah, and Woodland it, had ste- a bit of steam. Like true. they all kind of came. By the time they went off, their numbers weren't insane. No, and even like when we say like favorites, like Dustin was Dustin and Bryson were the co-favorites at Augusta in November, and obviously DJ ended up winning. But Morikawa and Bryson were by both like low twenties in terms yeah, of yeah, maybe odds. a thirty, maybe you caught a thirty-three or something on Morikawa. Um, Thirty-five might have been a peak. I know people had it early. I I was a late adopter on that bet. I think thanks to you. Um, but before we really get into it, Tim claims a self-proclaimed like major championship aficionado. We hit one expert, once. and it wasn't um, even a major. Not even so much. Yeah, the players. No, I don't even mean as a tout. I mean like a historian, a a know it all. Oh yeah, Tim. Ca- <laughs> Tim ca- I would not say know it all. Tim I would cares not say about the history of yeah, these majors like, rather than just yes, putting, putting money on yeah. it, trying to win money. No, yeah, no. When I say self-proclaimed expert, I don't mean from a picking winners. I mean sort of from the courses, the rotations, um, yes. all of the stuff that I do love, and sometimes I even ask him questions about because I know he has such a deep affinity for for this stuff. So I'm happy he's with us. Well, the one that he hates the most is the first one up in April. The Likes Masters. the least. The Masters. Tim hates the Masters for whatever I, I don't hate it. I don't hate it. That's foolish. He does. It's I just, don't hate it. No, it's, I, like, it's, I like the Masters. It's just so new. <laughs> it is the newest one and pretends like it's the <laughs> oldest one. That's true. But, I mean, still, it's, it's a great tournament. And I would never, ever miss it. It's I love the Masters. So it's eight, just not over- as good as the Is ones. it overrated? Yes, it is overrated because it's not the greatest golf tournament of the year. So, but I mean, that's not fair because it's the fourth best tournament of the year, and it's a, and, a, and it's maybe the fifth best this year because there's the Olympics. But it, oh it, my it's God. awesome! <laughs> I think the Olympics is a pseudo major. It's I'm not. Sorry. No, I, it, it, no, it's basically like a bad WGC. Justin Rose has got one and a half majors at worst, in my opinion, because he won the Olympic gold medal. Sorry, but that's just how I feel about it. It only comes every four years, and it's a very limited field. It's it's a very, very, very great accomplishment. Yeah, but the uh, field itself isn't very good, is the thing. Like, it's a really shitty Maybe, field. but it's very hard to get into it. 
Right? That's why the field isn't so No, well, you no, literally no, yeah, yeah. have to beat oh, Tong Chai JD and like 12 real golfers. Yeah. Like if you're American or British, it's really hard to get into it. If you're from any other country Once on Earth, it's pretty easy. Once you qualify as an American or Brit, you pretty much have like a 50% chance of meddling. <laughs> Uh, don't get me wrong. We got guys. We got a couple Spaniards. We got the South Africans. But they're in. Like, Rom is going to be in. There's no one, like, challenging him for his spot. With the Americans, it's, like, legit competitive. Like, Hideki is... Hideki would get in either way because the Olympics are in Japan. But, like, there's no Japanese challenger to take Hideki's spot. There just isn't. Yeah, I guess top just of off Shugo. the top of my head, like, the South African battle could be interesting. Could it? I don't know. They got... The guy just got two wins late. Like, Higo? Uh, bet... bet yeah, he's probably one of them. Him and EVR, I would guess, would be the two. But Louis, no, Louis places yeah. in major. Yeah, like, but you can get up to four spots. Oh, if your world ranking, ranking is high enough. enough. And they're all ranked well, inside we'll the top get, 50. I can't believe Tim has got... Uh, screw that. The Olympics. We've already divert... I don't want to talk about the Olympics. Remember when they had to like pretend to care about Zika last time so they didn't have to go? Oh, yeah, see? <laughs> There's an asterisk. It wasn't even I like mean, a... the PGA cares so much about it that they rearranged their major championship schedule for it, so... I guess they care. We'll see. We'll, we'll they, see they, in a they decade if to, that happens again. They want to be in the Olympics. It's a good pub to be in the Olympics, obviously. And they can put their majors wherever. Like, what are you doing? Like, oh, no, the John Deere Classic's not going to get a strong field. Well, it never gets a strong field anyway. It's not that big of a deal. The Canadian Open might suffer because of it. No one's really sweating that. Like, the Canadians will actually be competitive. Like, it would be hard for a Canadian to get into the Olympics because there's, like, four guys for two spots. That's pretty... Not hard, I don't know. No, but like if Corey Connors ends up getting in, he's like the 15th best player in this field. Oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, Emiliano Grillo is like, the, like you said, the 18th, 17th best guy playing. It's a, it's, it's a bad WGC is essentially what it turns out to be. Like in terms of strength of field, it's probably the 16th. You get Slovakian Rory Sabatini. Well, there's a reason to become <laughs> Slovakian. He's going to make the Ryder Cup team for the Euros. Reel off some wins here early I in the season. I love his sass at the Ryder Cup, I tell you. He'd be a fun, like... Did he even make President's Cup team? I'm sure he he's, must have. I'm sure I he's been on a President's Cup team, I'm, like the, the late aughts, yeah. but... Yeah, with an Allenby's or something? Yeah, we got a, you got a Robert Allenby, you got a Stuart Appleby, you got a Rory Savage. That's a gruff crew, by the way. Oh, yeah. I can see why those teams never won. <laughs> Still drinking all night. Whoa. Let's jump into the Masters. April 8th, 2021 will be the Thursday of the Masters. Obviously, a par 72, Augusta National, 7,475 yards, bent grass greens. The field as of right now is 84 players. That can be expanded all the way through the Houston Open. So we might see above 90 again, uh, just like it was in November. Dustin Johnson, obviously the defending champion. The past few winners at Augusta, Jeff. Dustin Johnson, minus 20, course record. Tiger Woods, minus 13. Patrick Reed, minus 15. Sergio, minus 9. Willett, minus 5. Spieth, minus 18. Bubba, minus 8. Scott, minus 9. Bubba, minus 10. That goes all the way back to 2012. Odds for the tournament. Your favorite is Dustin Johnson at 7 to 1. All these odds from DraftKingsSportsBook.com, if you were wondering. Bryson DeChambeau, 8 to 1. Rory McIlroy, 9 to 1. John Rahm, 10 to 1, as is Justin Thomas. Then you got Brooks at 14. Then there's a huge cutoff. And then you drop into the 20s with Xander Cantley, Hideki, Morikawa, Reed, Tiger, uh, and Tony Finau. What leaps out to you from that right away? Tim, we'll go to you first. Uh, I liked Justin Thomas's number there quite a bit. It's Justin a Thomas played very well, very well in November at this, this tournament. He is amongst one of the best players in the world. He's someone that people are not going to love when it comes time to be picking the Masters players. Uh, Justin Thomas is somebody who I think is very sneaky. He he, he doesn't you know he, he doesn't do anything really poorly in my opinion he, he because he's, he's so good. Well, but as you always say, putting is the least predictable thing on earth, right? True. So you get hot for four days, and particularly at Augusta, you get hot and you win for sure. But if you're just not bad for four days and you're, you know, you, you strike your irons purely and you put your ball out of the first cut and into the, into the cut stuff, then Justin Thomas is as good as anybody out there. So I looked at his numbers and I thought, hmm, those seem longer than they ought to be for a player of his caliber who has performed at Augusta very recently. 
So I want to remind everyone, if you want to do some early research into the course, sort of sort the player pools, adjust the stats, and really follow along, not just for the majors, but for every tournament on the PGA Tour, go to fantasynational.com, the single best site in the planet, on the interwebs, wherever you are, to, to get your golf stats and all of your golf tools. You use fantasynational.com slash mayo, you get yourself a discount. If you're serious about playing DraftKings golf, betting on golf, uh, it's something that you need to have in your repertoire because it will make you a better better and a better DraftKings player and a better daily fantasy player overall. I agree with Tim. I bet Justin Thomas last year 20 to 1 on this show. Obviously, he didn't win. He ended up coming in fourth. But the issue with tying your money up in things like this in futures, you have to remember, like this doesn't happen until April. We're recording this the first week of January. That, you know, could you put that money to better use? And the problem is with Dustin, Bryson, Rory, Rom, and Justin Thomas, these odds aren't getting any worse. Like, it, just Justin Thomas, at best, if he has an incredible run throughout the first part of the year, he goes to eight to one from ten to one. Like, yeah, th- there will there will be a bit of a separation when it's time to play. There, there's always movement in these numbers. I agree. I mean, to me, it's Justin or John. I mean that uh, that that, that those two ten to ones. But I think as a future, these are unbettable numbers. Yeah, I got those no ten interest. to ones. Exist if I want to bet them at eight to one in April because I love them that much, I'll do it. Yeah. The, the key to the futures... But is, they're more likely to be 12 or 14 than they are 8. Exactly. Especially week of if they're like not playing well coming yeah. in. But the key to the fu- uh, two futures betting, we had some success doing them. I mean, Danny Willett is still paying for himself at yeah. this point, grabbing him at this point of the year, that you want to be looking down the board to try to identify a player or two whose odds are currently like 80 to 1 or 60 to 1 that you think are just going to be 30 to 1 or 25 to 1 by the time that these tournaments actually roll yeah. around. And I, I don't see any right off the hop that leap out to me that they're going to be significantly worse. You could make the case like Xander or Cantlay at 25 and 20 to 1 could be one of the 12 to 1s by the time the Masters comes around, but I just don't think that's going to happen. I am sort of with you, Pat. Uh, like you, we hit the Willet, uh, great success. You I was woodland. also able to hit a Woodland as a early prop that went off at about half. Um, but I don't know. I'm not feeling anything. And in full disclosure, sometimes I have like lots of bets for majors. I don't have a single one right now. Not going to go as far down as you are speaking, but guys that could have life, I don't know, the Adam Scott at 50. Um, I could argue Daniel Berger at 40. I don't. I, I had I that don't, circled here. Berger I don't, at 40 to I one. I don't hate at all. If I actually had to make a move, you said Feinberg, you got to make a, make a master's bet. I might, that, that Berger at 40 might be where I go. I think that's an incredibly fair number. And I believe Daniel Berger, as I've said on a couple of our preseason stuff, the, the outlier was the bad year. The norm for Daniel Berger is a guy that will forever or for the next decade be contending for a Ryder Cup and President's Cup spot team. So he's an all-star. Molinari is a hundred to one. No chance. No, Don't care. go deeper than 50 to one. No one deeper than 50 to one yeah, ever wins the match. If I see Molinari but, playing well in Florida, then maybe I'll run to my computer. And but he, like, from okay. each way, but, but, I understand but, but, it. But, but, but there is no each way on this because you're trying to make the bet now. I don't care. That if Molinari plays well, he's not going to be a hundred to one. He's going to be like so 35 Woodland, to one. Then. I, I think that's a pretty that's fine the number Because that's 60 maybe if he's just Gary Woodland. Or better. He or at, better. He went off at 40 two years yeah, ago. Okay, there. So there. That That's a number I don't mind at all. Then what? What a redemption story it would be for Molinari, because the guy has disappeared off the face of the planet. What do you play? One event, two events? I'm not care. I don't yeah, care. like I can't remember seeing him since he put two in the drink at twelve. Uh, I, in I, yeah. So Woodland has been one, gone. Woodland at one twenty-five. That's the guy. Woodland one twenty-five. Burger at forty. That's what are my recommendations. What about your guy, Ricky? Sixty-six. That could get whatever. No. <laughs> the game is too competitive at the moment. Maybe Joachim Neiman at 66, Pat. I don't know, but like that have to be. An Ricky's going to win a major by again, posting a number. And I've said this for years and I still stand by it. He's going to win like Webb yeah, Simpson won the U.S. Says Open. That. Post, knows uh, that. Po- because it's a fact. Clubhouse Ricky. That, but we all thought that's how Sergio would win. Sergio had to make the putt. Yeah. And he did. And he made well, it. Well, he actually had to make it twice because he missed it the first time. Okay, fine. But I'm saying, like, forever we thought, like, okay, Sergio's going to win a major because he posts and then he just holds. 
And, then, and I, I always figured it was going to be the British Open. He'd get out early on one of these days when weather just ravaged everyone in the afternoon. Mm. He'd go shoot like two under and everyone else shoots seven lie, over and he wins. That's sort of what it feels like how Tony Fino's just going to win a basic <laughs> event. That's how he's going like, to win the Waste the, Management the Detroit, Open? Detroit, the, the, the 3M. <laughs> the three, that's how Fino's got to win the 3M, and then we can worry about something better. Uh, Fino will win a 54-hole event. Yeah. <laughs> Pray for a rain out on Sunday. <laughs> get, the, get a Brian Stewart India. Uh, um, here's one for you. Bubba 33, because if the Riviera's kind to him and he does some things. I just don't see that number, because even... If it's 28, who gives a shit? Exactly. Yeah. So he had the amazing run throughout the course of the fall season this year. Like I think that people really overlook the fact that Bubba from basically July through November mm. was the best second or third best player on the planet yeah. he just couldn't make a putt somehow and he thought that would get rectified he just lost all the goodwill ball striking that he had kind of fluttered at augusta which was really surprising so i don't and he didn't even get better than 33 to one week of then so i don't know how high he's gonna go he'd have to win like twice the one i was actually looking at and i don't know really how to parse it or what to make of it but it's the first time i've seen opening odds this low and i've actually seen numbers higher than this at other places Speeth is 66 to 1. I mean, if he shows any life, any life whatsoever, he's immediately going back up. Because even last year, it was just like by, by week of, he's back down to like 40. And people were like all above about Jordan Speeth, and he wasn't even playing well. If somehow he fixes something, and he's been going through these swing changes, it's a lot like the Bubba thing where he's always going to have a shot here, it seems. What about TikToks? Sorry, Speeth, sure. So, I don't know. I don't think it gets like like. Do you think it's odd that Jordan Spieth has the same odds as Will Zalatoris to win the Masters? That's that in and itself is crazy. But I don't think Spieth like a low point for me is a forty to one. Yeah, but what if he win? What if he wins Pebble this year? I'd rather bet Hovland right now. I guess Hovland has played. He's a debutant technically as a professional. But we but but he had a strong amateur. Champ fared really well tim's guy champ at this year's yep. how, how different do you think that this year's match or 2020's masters in november is going to be different from the 2021 masters i don't think it's going to be that different Com at all completely and I go, different and i but i'm surprised I cameron even. smith isn't 25 to 1 the way people talk about him <laughs> i'm joking but like <laughs> well he played awesome in the, i know again, again again it's the fall, fall versus spring huge difference some crowd versus no crowd, big difference. Time of year that in you know part of the season that you're in, big difference. In my opinion, and what do I know? I know nothing. I wouldn't look at 2020 almost at all in considering or trying to handicap things. I know I said Justin Thomas played well here, Can you ran out but that's talk? not the reason to pick Justin Thomas. It's because he's one of the best players in the world. I don't think last. I don't think November has a whole lot to teach us. It honestly, there's less to be learned from that than there is from. Uh, you know, what we usually see at a Tory in January vis-a-vis -vis the U.S. Open. Yeah, and that's even played at split course. So then, I'm, so then exactly. I guess Sung J 45 isn't a good bet because he had a great little run last year. It's not year. that it's not a good bet. It's just if your reason is because he played here well in November, I don't think that holds water. It needs to be based on something a little bit more substantive than that. And you can make the case because Sung J is an awesome player. But don't hinge it on, oh, well, he played really well in August and November. I'm just like, trying to remember who played well here last year. And I know the winner had come second a few times, so I don't know. Yeah, D Dustin had a very good course history. It was Sungjae's first appearance at the Masters, and he ended up coming in second. Cam Smith added another top five at the Masters, so he has two and three turns. Who else Two and well? three turns. Um, Scheffler ended up as a debutant inside the top 20. Corey Connors. Had Fratelli ever played there before? Uh, no, Fertelli was a debutant. Connors had played, had made the cut in his only other appearance at the yes. Masters before. He came inside the top ten. Munoz was a first timer. He faltered on Sunday. Answer was a first timer. He faltered Pan? on Sunday. Was Pan a first timer? No, Pan was not a first timer. Okay, I believe he got in because no, maybe was he a first timer? Because he won the Heritage, but I can't remember what year he won the Heritage in. If it was the beginning of last year or not. Yes, that was his first and only Masters tournament. But he couldn't miss a putt for three days, and then he started missing putts and shot like 80. Correct. <laughs> but I'm just saying when, when the crowds show up, and there will be some crowds at Augusta this April, and it's a different time of year, I, I just think it's a different experience. And so that's my view is I, I won't be personally looking at 2020 too heavily. Other than that, I, I think I'm kind of with you on like the Sung Jays, the Burgers, 
I could see Woodland, 125. Woodland at 125 actually makes some sense. I don't think that the Masters is the right venue for him. Agreed. It's not a place I'd want to bet Gary Woodland to win the majors anyway. We would rather the thick hosel of U.S. Open greenside rough than an Augusta tight lie. Yeah, well, the best around the green players do well at the Masters because you need to be pure. Yeah. Gary sucks around yeah. the greens just, unless he's like buried in. Yeah, th- we, yeah we need a U.S. <laughs> Open hosel rough, not tight lie Augusta pure no. pureness. Yeah, these numbers will change throughout the course of the year because they can't just stick everyone at 33 to 1 and 40 No, but, but also... You'll get some drift. Like if Wolf or Smith or Scott or Rose agreed. start off really poorly, they're going to go to 66 or 70. And then maybe you might take another shot. But until we actually get to the cream of the crop time, Pat, history tells me they, they do not really move those top guys. Even if they're playing bad, they always give those top guys time to like get it right. And if we get to week of or, or two weeks before and they're still not right, then you see the books adjust the top guys. But they give those top guys every opportunity to, to fix their games, to live up to those prices. I will almost guarantee you you get better numbers on four of the five I agree. top guys I agree. right now by the time the Masters I agree. Out. Like, what did Dustin go off at in November? Nine to one? Nine to one, maybe. I, I'm ten asking. One, I yeah, yeah. And Levy went off right. to ten to one. So yeah. So if he's ten to one, there was no players that were in single digits, but they're listing three right now. Like, come on, it's not going to happen. So I wait, agree. Wait on the top. You'll get a better net, even if it's a twelve versus a ten, which is substantial at the top, uh, with the amount of money that you need to bet in order to get those. I mean, on a percentage basis, it's as high as moves that would bug you more. Yeah, like if something goes from like 80 to 75, obviously that's a mass, it's a larger swing in terms of betting odds, like per dollar. But I'm betting a lot more on a 10 to 1 than I would be on a 70 to 1. PGA Championship. The 103rd PGA Championship is at a Pete Dye course for the second time. Kiowa Island, the ocean course, May 20th. So I, I think I have this right. Par 72, 7,848 yards. Is what I'm reading. Isn't that that's sense? the way I remember it was being a super, super, super long course. Yeah. Colin Morikawa is the defending champion of the PGA Championship. Obviously, not from the same event. The last time it was held here was in 2012. Rory McIlroy won by eight strokes at minus 13 over David Lynn at minus five, Justin Rose at minus four, Ian Poulter minus four, the Swedish porn king, Carl Peterson at minus four, and Keegan Bradley at minus four. Just scanning the top ten, you had Rory, Lynn, Rose, Poulter, Peterson, Donaldson, and Peter Hansen uh, all finish inside the top ten. So very Euro-heavy last time around. The biggest change to this course from the last time we saw it, Bermuda grass greens in all the way up until 2019, I believe, or 2018, at the Ocean Course at Kiowa Island. They're now, I always screw up the name of this, the Paspalum Greens, Jeff? The ones that we see in the Caribbean, the ones that we see like Kuala Lumpur, that kind of thing. This is where I like Justin Thomas. I think this is his major. It's the best setup for him. And the number is great. And it's fair. 14. I think that's strong. Is that what we got? 14? That's what I see. Let me scroll down here. Ah, you want to bet Mike Weir at 1,000 to 1 at the Masters, Tim? I'm seeing Bryson and Justin at co- <laughs> at co fourteens, and I think both of them um, would be two of my favorite bets because I'm not betting under ten to one for Dustin Johnson. No, Dust. Yeah, Dustin's ten, Rory's ten, Rom eleven, Bryson twelve, JT twelve, Brooks sixteen, Xander sixteen. This could be a nice spot for Xander to get his first two. I think this is going to be sixteen to one. Uh, yeah, it's not great. You be you're never you're never going to get better than that with Xander. We just Whatever. we've seen it far too many times. But do you believe in this Euro thing, though? Like, that's a lot of Euros at the top of this list. Yeah. Uh, Could be a nice famous, p- famous European location. It has a nickname for that famous Ryder Cup there, Pat, the War by the Shore. I believe yep. maybe Tim can I correct that, me if I'm wrong. I thought that was uh, named after General Schwarzkopf. <laughs> it's the War by the Shore. Um, no, but that sounded like a WCW pay-per-view. <laughs> um, War by the Shore. Uh, Tim's boy beach. like Woosnam. Yeah, I think. I, I, I like this place. I could see the Euro correlation. Um, I like I like Justin Thomas again, and maybe even some Bryson DeChambeau at the numbers I'm looking at. If picking the top, if going into the middle range, Pat, at a number I'm looking at, 
Sung J M fifty five to one. It's a good he number. He just seems reliable. Uh, you know, he's and he kind of sound like Rory aside from the names that are at the top of this leaderboard. And I don't know how much it's going to play similar to twenty twelve. But Sung Jae reminds me of your Roses and Polters and like that type of player. Like he can putt. A lot of these guys can't putt. Very top end guys. Like Sung Jae can really start burning it on the greens. And his around the green game is tremendous. A lot like even Rory. I mean, at the time, Rory could just bash and hit his irons. But Lynn, Rose, Poulter, all fantastic on and around the greens. This could be a ha- uh, this so maybe a, like. Uh... I don't this know. Seems this is like a, a bigger Wolf hat course if there ever was one. Matthew this Wolf? is a Matthew Wolf course. Oh, I, I think you're so. getting 42 to 1 on him. Really? I think that's foolish. 40 to 1 is just where he's going to be for all the majors at this point. But for a course with this length and his ability, I think you're getting a very, very fair number uh, for him there. Now, I'm not picking him to win. Actually, you know what? Sure. You know what? I'm actually going to pick will him. You, to will win you stop cursing I think, Matthew Wolf? I think this is a great spot for him. Uh, what can I say? I mean, the course, like I said, is super long. He has looked, he's looked impressive in every championship we've seen him in uh, to varying degrees. He's, he's obviously a great player. And like you said, I mean, the wind here, I mean, this, the, what is worth noting, this course is built, it's called the ocean course because it's built right on the ocean. And so this course defends itself big time with weird whirl, uh, swirling winds coming off the, the Atlantic. So you want someone who you think is, is kind of tough uh, mentally and can sort of handle that. And I, I think Wolf is built for that. So uh, I, I'm in his corner on that. And like I said, I think you're getting really good value on him. So how about Siwoo Kim? Oh yeah. Siwoo for sure. Pete Dye course. Yeah. yeah just take your Pete Dye special. It could be a Jason Day special Isn't too. It? I was going to say, yeah. cause it, it's a really long course. Yeah, that's a like problem, you said, right? it, it hurts it, guys like Hatton and Kisner. Like, do you think they could yeah, have but they're a good, pulse? But they're good wind players too. Like this, th- this could be a big opportunity. I think like at the very top, I'm not going to bet Justin Thomas so at, at 12 to one. I'm just going down to the, like just looking at triple digit odds right now. And someone who could definitely, definitely be half this number or better by the time it comes around, depending mm-hmm. yes. on how his season opens up. Baba. No, keep going. Triple digits. He is a lefty, though. He's the, he's the Scottish Tim Andercast. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. oh. This would be a bit... Listen. Bobby Mack? It'd I, be a big achievement. It's a but, big ask. But listen, but Mar- here, Morikawa cool. just did it at the PGA It's a big ask. And if you told me a year ago doing this show, Morikawa for the PGA... I don't whoa, whoa, whoa it too, as much as I love the prospect as of him doing it. But it's funny because on the show last year, we would have been like, oh, Morikawa. But we both bet Hovland to win that tournament. At yeah, that, oh, there's an insane future. But yeah, you're, you're not. But Morikawa wrong. would have been like 200 to one. It's a big ass. That's really all I'm saying. Like, is that going to be his first American win? He'll play in the WGCs. He'll play in the Masters. But again, there's a high probability he's never won on it like a PGA event before that event. I mean, there aren't right. No, I know. I agree. That's all. So that's like his first wit. Like sure, but if you're just if I'm just if I'm looking for someone whose odds are probably going to be slashed by the time it comes around, that's, that, I, that's, I believe he's a good sorry, player. That's a good point. I believe he's a good player. I'm not saying he's just going to win, but if I can get 150 you're trying and to lock call it a guy in now, it's 150. It's going to go off at 75, 60, or 40, 60, 40 if he plays well. Yeah, yeah, of course. No, sorry, I sort of lost track in where we were in the conversation. You don't think that like I a, love Bobby, a, a 22 or 23 year old like big hitting Scottish player, if he gets like two or three wins on the Euro Tour, plays as well at a WGC or the Players or something like that, that they won't instantly cut his price? Please give me like a. And how old was Rory when he won this thing? Know. Can I get like a 200 Matt Wallace or that's too big? No, Matt Wallace was 150. I saw because I was looking at him as well. Because he's a feisty bugger. Any of these long shots that you liked him, like Lee Westwood? Corey Connors. No, I, I don't hate Hideki, although I wouldn't call him a long shot. I don't hate Hideki here. What are his odds? Uh, Probably 30. 25. Yeah. Pass on that. What's it going to be? 20? Yeah. Like. What's he going to do? They'll Potentially win the waste management and be 22 to one to win the PGA. Yeah. Well, I don't know. He was on his way to winning the players championship. Uh, listen, I'm a fan. I'm not bashing. Again. Oh, hold on. Hold on a second. Can you, can you just repeat <laughs> that statement? He had shot 63 in the opening round. He, at the he, players he was winning by he two was after going, he was winning he by was two win. after one round at the players championship, pro- which was canceled. I think he was, think he was probably going to win it. Well, I don't he think so I much win equity to put behind his two-stroke lead with 54 holes to play, Pat. 
I can tell you such a closer. I, I can tell you what the actual probability of him winning that tournament was for the odds. Six to one. When it ended? No, no, like his overall chance oh. of actually winning after seventy-two holes, despite leading after it was around, I believe, seventeen percent to win. Okay, but no, he was definitely gonna win. Guy hasn't won since twenty seventeen, but yeah, he's mm. definitely gonna win. The fact that you are calling it ensures that it wasn't gonna happen. Anyhow, I'm not besmirching the Hideki pick. No, but Hideki and PGA Championships to me um, should have gone hand in hand. There was the one JT one that I think he was right there, at least maybe not till the end. That was but, at Quail but, Hollow. But yeah, like, Kisner was there. You know, and and he, yeah, the, the pressure on him, and he was, you know, sort of crying by himself behind a cabin. But hey, I, I'm excited for him. He is one of those guys, Pat, I and mean, we talk about it a lot. He's 28 years old. Like I, I didn't even realize he was that yeah. old. I thought he was still like 26. So maybe he's 27 then, but but maybe turns 28 this year. But on the trajectory, uh, there's still time there for big things. I mean, if there's, for a bigger, if there's for still a big time moment. for Ricky, Ricky's like secretly 47 years old. Ricky's like 31 or 32. He's younger than Ricky. Ricky and like Rory are the same age, basically, yeah. which is kind of nuts to think about. Uh, if we're going young guys, like, I mean, Tim, you, lo- you do love Champ. Uh, Champ is double the odds of Wolf. That was, that was a great, those are great odds for a great player. Champ has also got exi- exactly the type of game you think would thrive in sort of what I think is a very unpredictable course. It's 7,800 yards, but I just looked it up to make sure. It's one of these courses that disguises its length with really long par threes. So what seems like a longer course sometimes is not as long as you think. Sometimes Getting courses will do that to make themselves seem really impressive. Uh, by making all their par threes long, but and then that is the case with Kiowa Islands. But nevertheless, uh, yeah, Champ is exactly the type of player that would thrive here, and I would be excited to see him win. It is striking to see that leaderboard once again from 2012, where you have Rory, who was probably the longest hitter outside of like Bubba and John Daly at the time in 2012, and everyone else is not a big hitter. They're like grinders, and that no, that's a fair point. Yeah, Willis, Wallace, Willett. Wallace, Willett, like that type of guy. Lowry. Lowry, yeah. Like that type of guy could be super. Kisner, you mentioned already. Kisner to Pete Dye. South Car- this is South Carolina, right? Yeah, somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. So Dustin J-Row will be well low. Here. Dustin might just tear. If I had to pick a major for Dustin that isn't Augusta, it'd be probably be this one, to be honest. I think Augusta's out the window for him. Uh, just, I would pick Royal St. George's if I had to pick anywhere for Dustin. He should have so, won it last time. It's so Probably hard to win back-to-back back Masters. Okay, then this is my pick. If I have to pick Dustin's major for this year, it's this one. But I'm not betting it. And Royal St. George's, well, Dustin could dominate it. It's so wide open, and we'll get there. So that's why I'd be less inclined to pick the top. The one name we haven't brought up yet, and only because he's... Jason Day. He's, no, he's going to be a debutant at the, the Augusta. Masters. I think Neiman's super live. 80, well, he, he is highly discredited in the betting odds coming into the year, where you have a Matthew Wolf at 40, and you have Morikawa. Now, granted, Morikawa has won a major, but he's 25 to 1. Hovland is what? Vic is also 40 to 1. Neiman is basically as good as all of these guys and has a PGA Tour win in like a real event uh, and contended in some pretty good tournaments um even like the bmw championship towards the end he had a really nice season last year he's 70 to 1 but he's just so much farther behind those guys he has the same odds again as will zelatoris why do people love will zelatoris so much i like him too but he played not, well late in the year that's why he did but to put him on neiman's level already and it's fun to say zelatoris but it's not joaquin neiman. don't underestimate that <laughs> it's, eh, like, it's, like, it's like travis outlaw Yes. Here's a hundred million dollars. Tour. Yeah, yeah. Here's a million bucks. Here's a hundred million bucks, Travis Outlaw. We like your name. EVR. Do you think he burns me so much? Does EVR have major upside though? Yes. I mean, if the, the, if the, the rains the, the, come in off the water, he's got the high pants that he won't get flooded. <laughs> That's true. Look, you. I love EVR, and then I follow up my EVR and my just misses on him from a few years ago. And then you break down stats where, like, oh, my God, his long iron play, his greens and reg play, like, really does show up statistically with the best players in the world. I, I and f- then I over, I overcommit, or what's the word? I overweight 
EVR, and I just dead every time. I, I once referred to remember for before he came over here, like when we first got Eric Van Royen on the European tour, and he'd come like third every single week. Literally, he was the Luke list yeah. of the European tour. Yeah, like Tony you look at the Fina stats, you're like, oh, Europe. this is this is the best yeah. player going ever. You can't win every Sunday. You wake up with your newborn, and like, oh my god, EVR is contending. Oh, Russell Knox or Matt Wallace hit forty footers <laughs> to like beat him, but contending every week. This could be a Finau one, too. Yeah, but the number's too short. The, the number, and you I, have to believe he wins, which is a hard thing to believe. But but yes, just like, uh, where were we? Hard at, these PGA Championships, the U.S. Opens, you could see me going back to the well with Finau, but there's no rush on the numbers. Finau's best perform not best performance in a major, but when, when he first really broke onto the scene, was actually at Whistling Straits, another Pete Dye PGA Championship. That was the year that day one, I believe. Yes. I think he was fourth 15, or fifth. 15, yes. Yeah, yeah, it was like the first, like, holy shit, Tony Fina, here yeah. we go. And just, then he carried that into, yeah. yeah. I, I agree. The number just, I don't know. If he's winning, if Tony Fina is like winning by six strokes with like five holes left on Sunday, I'll be running to the computer to get my Kiowa Island bets in. I saw someone release a really interesting statistical article. Uh, I was on Twitter last night. I, I favorited it, so I have to go back and look at it again. But it showed basically pressure players. It took Sunday stats in contention and just kind of like rolled everything forward. Uh -oh. Who's the best and who's the worst? And it was like shocking how bad Tony Finau is in contention on Sunday. Like your perception told you he was bad and these numbers even blew away your perception you know, is what you're saying. Do you know who the two best Sunday players per this were? In contention on Sunday on, on the PGA Tour. Tim, I'll, I'll throw it out to you. John DeChambeau. Rahm. So there's two. You have two. That would have been. Yeah, Rom would have been my second guess. DeChambeau and Rom. And what would you say? Patrick Reed. Did did Rom? There's one guy you're missing here because he wins so much. Justin Thomas. Yeah. So. <laughs> it's Bryson and Justin Thomas. <laughs> Duh, okay, sorry. And, and then I believe it's DJ. Obviously, so I'm trying to be fancy because I, I, I think you're tricking me. No, like, I, I, it was just no, like a, no, kind right. of a straight up question. I, I'll try to go find it and retweet it. I thought it was pretty cool to go see. They they really dug into the. I would like to see that stat taking out players who are like top five in the world. Because they're so their skill level to me is so superb that it can like. I want to see guys like when I say I'm betting Burger, I'm betting Reed because I trust them when they get in that spot. I think that's we, sort of what I am interested in. I'm not surprised to hear the top four players in the world are yeah, dominant. I'm shocked the fleet. I'm shocked the Fleetwood isn't on that list. He always plays so big in those big moments on the weekend. Tim, well, it's you funny. Wrote an well, apology letter at well, the end of the year. Did you see that? Well, actually, no, I didn't. That's very, very gentlemanly to have done. Uh, actually, Fleetwood Sundays are really good. Fleetwood Saturday. Yeah, it it's is. like Fowler. Fowler Sundays aren't so bad. <laughs> Fowler Saturdays are really it's bad. It's true. It's true. <laughs> they, they just tend to blow it before actually getting into contention. The funniest one was Rory on that list because Rory was like a bit down on the list compared to the other elite players in the world. But when you looked at like the number of rounds that they were quote unquote in contention, he was like double everybody else because he's always in contention. Always not like that. Yeah. Well, that's exactly right. So sometimes stuff like that can be misleading. Like... If I'm going to bet a guy to win, I would prefer to take the guy who's always there on Sunday. Even if he blows it more often than not, he just has more chances yeah, to do it. I, yeah, I want my chance of sitting on Sunday with a guy in contention. I'm going to see if I can pull this up right now. I totally forget who ended up. Oh, I was tweeting out NFL stats. I like too much stuff. I try, try to be a friend of the people and like people's people tweets. People appreciate if they see a light come through from the Pat Mayo. I'm I don't know sure. about that, but... Now I'm never going to find it. Eh, well, I'll keep searching. Anything else on the PGA Championship? Tim's no. first favorite tournament thinks it's the best? No, it's not the best, but it's the third best. I like Paul Casey here, too, as a long shot. Oh, what are his odds? 50 to 1 last I saw. Yeah. yeah, I don't mind that. He played well at the last PGA. Yeah. He's a, he played he's well at the last PGA. He's a solid Co player. He's probably, I think he's be on the Ryder Cup team. Checks a lot of boxes. Tim could be onto something. Paul checks a lot of boxes here. But then there's that part of betting Paul Casey. Uh, John Ezekowitz put this out here. I'm going to give out his Twitter handle. It is at John Ezekowitz. Uh, wrote this up. I finally found it. I'll go to the chart because I'm just going to try to read it. I have 1% remaining on my iPad. Yeah, Bryson, Justin Thomas, John Rahm, Dustin Johnson, Adam Scott are your top five Sunday players. 
Okay, um, but Scott played like three tournaments last year or something. It's not, this isn't just last year. It's from 2016. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. When I'm en- sorry. And it's the performance when entering the final round top 10 or better from 2016 through last year. Scott, yes, has by far the fewest amount of appearances. He only has 20, uh, but he has four wins in that time. So they give you expected wins based on your probability and an expectation of like how you actually do. So Bryson... Um, was given in that time in his 28 rounds, he was expected to win 4.6% of the events, like because they're using actual data. And he actually had nine wins. So he almost doubled, he more than doubled up what his expectation was, or just barely almost doubled it up. So that was pretty interesting. Uh, Brooks, Sergio, Tiger, Hideki, weirdly enough, because uh, he tends to either like be in it or be completely out of it. And then if you look down at the bottom of the list, Finau, Fowler, Rory, Spieth, and Webb Simpson are all down there. Webb Simpson, not a closer. Phil and Rose and Fleetwood, Tim, your guy. All at the bottom of that list. Understood. Oh, we should put a pin in something I was going to mention back at the Masters. I wouldn't be shocked in the least if DeChambeau had a huge Masters this year after having been humbled back in November. That would not, if of all the top guys on the board, he's probably the hungriest, and I would not be shocked at all if he had learned his lesson and, like, redoubled his efforts to win that thing to save face uh, amazing comment Sorry. i should have yeah. mentioned that earlier riveting take that bryson's gonna be in play to win the masters i do not just in play i do think but it's like, embarrassing to think he's any hungrier than say like rory or john rom or justin no. Thomas. Oh, he def- i would say he is i would say he definitely is i i can't speak to the hunger aspect of it but i do agree with tim's point that, that he wants it more no that i think that his supreme failure in november He's the best at making adjustments of any player on tour. Yes. That whatever he did that was really wrong at Augusta in November, I feel like he'll have... A, he'll, I 100% he'll, agree. He'll have rectified those There'll problems. be a gallery there to find his fucking ball. That's true. <laughs> That's, well, he's like on a heater. <laughs> the gallery will find his ball. <laughs> well, he just would have hit one of them at that point. Whatever. Is he the most dangerous man on the PGA Tour? Just because he lets it fire off the tee? I guess, because you could be going. watching a different hole with your back to, like... <laughs> 370 yards away from where Bryson is on an opposite fairway and get hit in the back of the head. But whatever. So we can officially peg Bryson DeChambeau as the Steve Blackman? Sure. <laughs> or the Ken Shamrock, the world's most dangerous man? Okay. All right. It's open season. U.S. Open. The 121st U.S. Open, the second time it will be of be held at Torrey Pines, the South Course, on June 14th, 7,642 yards. What is it, Paul? Bryson? Yeah, Bryson won the U.S. Yeah. Open. No, no, no beautiful, mistake. Beautiful. Poa no, Greens. Took, defi- a, took de- a part of the hardest U.S. Open course there is. Defending champion Bryson DeChambeau, a winner for Jeff Feinberg, defeating my pick of Matthew Wolf to win. That was not fun after watching Wolf really gag it away. Uh, 156 players in the field. Uh, the last time it was played here was 2008. And you may remember a certain guy on one leg winning in an 18 hole playoff over Rocco Mediate. His name is Eldrick Woods. Probably not going to win the U.S. Open this time around. Can I say I have my strongest take of winners of anyone on this tournament? Lead us off. Yeah, right? hit me. John Rom. Bold. A previous winner. He loves, yeah, loves loves Tory Pines. He's won there. Top five the last three if years he, in a row, including if, winner last year. If he gets an early season win, yeah, if he's in form for this thing, he'll be the chalk. I'm surprised the like the books are doing everything they can to hold. Are they him playing from the San Diego the Open or the Farmers? Sorry, at. Uh, Tory this year, or are they taking the year off? No, they're, no they're, they're playing it. But it's again, you okay. play, you split between the north course and the south course the first two days. Then you play both weekend rounds at the course where they're playing the U.S. Open. But the setup is going to be completely different. Okay. Also, no, no, it is. I just didn't know if they were I'm, taking the year I'm, off. I'm, Remember the year Quail Hollow was the U- PGA Championship. Yeah, they they went didn't away. go they to didn't, Quail they didn't Hollow. Go there. You but, are right. but they completely re- redesigned the course that year for the Correct. PGA Championship. Guys, okay. I mean, what I am looking at, Pat, you can't really bet anything. I'm seeing seven guys under 14 to one. We know that's not going to be the case. Um, I would be very interested if Brooks sucks for two months that you just bet Brooks to win all of the majors. If he drops below 20 in the month, they'll move him quick. They will. He's the one guy, he's the one guy Bry- like, Bryson too. If Bryson's like plays poorly, they are not afraid to yeah, we'll DraftKings Sportsbook might be a little bit different because Bryson is now sponsored by DraftKings, but 
I, I don't know how that's going to factor into the actual betting odds of it all. Um, but Brooks, they are very quick to like kind of yank out, even at majors. Yep. No, I agree. Um, yeah, sure. I mean, it's it's January, so you're asking me who's going to win the U.S. Open. I guess uh, to me, John Rom. I've, yeah. Yeah, and you're not betting Rom at ten to one. No, I'm not betting. You, it today. you might get. He might be the favorite in June at eleven. No, to 1. <laughs> I'll be perfectly honest. As we are recording this, because I don't have a single bet out there. You'll tell me this is a bad strategy. I don't really care. Sometimes I like to have fun. I haven't done anything yet. I don't have a single major future. This is NFL playoff season. Let's say there is an NFL playoff game that I absolutely adore. Um, I could I could sprinkle something with with a golfer for a major, one of these chalky, chalky favorites in one of these majors that I like. Just as a quick math example, for easy math's sake, um, let's say I was betting $100 on said NFL game. I would just say, you know what? I'm betting 80 on this game, and 20 of that is going with that golfer. Now, I bet more, but for easy math. And I think that is a really stupid idea. Yeah, I agree. But sometimes I just... Sometimes it's fun. You yeah. bet to have fun. If you're having and fun... And I'm just it, like saying like, okay, so I bet this much on the game. I have so little of what I have on the game is in this parlay that if that team loses the game, I'm not like mad about that like 12% chip that got wasted there because it's lost anyway. I'm more mad at how I really got that game wrong. Um, and if it wins... I'm happy that I won that money. And what do you know? There's still uh, there's a there's a golden nugget sitting in my account. U.S. Open, Tory Pines. There's one guy down the board I don't there, mind. There are three guys down the board here. How far? Jason Day's won here twice and is 50 to 1. Jason Day is a marvelous choice. He gets time to figure it out. Sure, I don't hate that. I, I don't he hate that. He loves the course. You could sell me on it. I, I was going to go even lower than that, actually. Uh, in the 80 to 1 range on DraftKings Sportsbook right now, I think there are three players with a legit chance. Two players with a legit chance and someone who's won here before that just I find very perplexing. So Leishman. No, Leishman was not one of those guys. Actually, he's even farther down the board, I think. Neiman at 80 for this one. Okay. Uh, you're back Stedeker. on. You're back on Poa. Um, you have a great TD, you have a great ball striking game. TD Green is a bit Where wonky. Where did he win? Uh, he, who? An amateur thing? Who? No, no, he hasn't won here. Oh, sorry. One of your pick. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Bubba Watson has won here before. He's eighty to one. I That's... just don't. I just don't ever think that the USGA setup is going to be good for him. But this is new Bubba, man. New Bubba, and if he plays as well as he did Bubba. in the fall, these are Poa greens. He can putt on those. That's usually not that big of a problem for him. And then Gary Woodland at eighty to one to win the U.S. Open at a course where he's come second like three times. Mm -hmm. Loves coastal. Loves coastal course. Loves California. That is one. As opposed to the Masters one, that's 125. You, this one actually feels like he could get there at the end. Yes. The Masters maybe has a great week. Yeah, I agree. comes eighth. Yeah, yeah, I agree with actually everything you just uh, lined out there, Pat. I, I think that range is super interesting. And they're all long shots. Like, Woodland's going to be better. He's not going to have a torn labor room in his hip forever. I'm trying to find the number. What number did you say it is? 80. I see a hundred on on something even you, better. You do. Then you did pet that one. That will that if you wanted to, you could even each way it. The other one that I think that you can go way down the list for, and obviously because this guy oh, is betting that is two hundred to one, uh, that he doesn't have a great shot of winning. When are these shows coming out? This show, yeah, it's coming out on Thursday. I just want to make my get my bets in. Ryan Palmer, two hundred to one. Nope. Another guy who has played very well at Torrey Pines in the past. Each way. And yeah, it's an each way, but if you take an each way, that means you bet him to win. Yeah, I don't care. No, I'm saying I have no, I don't bet Ryan Palmer to win golf tournaments. I mean, it's usually winning strategy, <laughs> but 200 to one at a tournament like this, where he is, again, he lost in the playoff the same year that Woodland did to Jason Day for one of those wins. It just, I find it striking that like half the time you ratchet up the difficulty of a course and Ryan Palmer tends to play pretty well. Like who was trying to chase down John Rahm at Memorial when no one else could be under par? It was Ryan Palmer. Like, there's a weird corollary that Palmer tends to play. He's, you know how we always used to say that wherever Jason Day plays well, Kevin Chappell will just come like third that week. Yeah, yeah. Palmer is kind of the mini version of that to Ron. Well, <laughs> and they're buddies. They're tag team and they, partners. And they, yeah, they were pals. Like, their games are very similar. It's just John Rom is way better. Anyway, that this uh, be a grinded out. This is a grinded out tournament. This this is a, you know, much like we saw in Winged Foot, sort of like grappling. Who can like avoid the major blow up on Sunday to avoid the triple instead of just taking his regular bogey 
and moving forward. Like that's how this thing will be decided. Sure, so but we need if, trust. But but if pressure. You, but if you if you think do you think it'll play as difficult as Wingfoot did? No, but I bet you. But I mean, no, nothing will play as difficult as Wingfoot did. But I do mean, I think the winning score is four or five under par? Yes. Well, Tiger won in two thousand eight at minus one. Correct. So I think maybe it's three or four under par. I mean, Wingfoot played over even. Only one person broke broke par. Tory's not that tough of a course, but it still can be groomed to be quite gruesome. And then, so, and then you have know. the outside chance that you get something like the year that's one of the years that Snedeker won. Uh, the Farmers Insurance Open, where just wind comes in and completely dusts out people. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, that's in play for this course. But, Absolutely. Three of the four majors are right on the ocean this year. But I think which that makes them tough to when you look at okay. U.S. Open winners, and even from like the top to bottom of the top 10 uh, at Winged Foot last year, you know what you didn't see a lot of? Really balanced type players. Like Bryson, not great around the greens, not great with his wedges. He ends up winning. Because uh, he drives the ball well and makes a few putts. Matthew Wolf, horrible around the greens. Can I get- Not a great putter. Will Zalatoris came inside the top 10. Like, there was a lot of, like, bomb and gouge type guys that the em- because the rough tends to be so difficult at some of these places, and Bryson kind of figured it out that the emphasis on hitting the fairways, you know, just if I can just hit it down farther, if everyone's missing the fairways, who cares? Just hit it as far as you can. Then you don't have to rely on your around the green game. You just kind of lay up and two putt from 40 feet. That's what he did. That's how he won. I think Palmer is a type of player that could do that. Okay. I was hoping the number would be bigger right now. But sneaky Tory Pines play, Pat? Alex Noren. He had that one good time there. Yeah. Where J.B. Holmes iced him, and then he lost today the next morning in a playoff. What, what, what is his? 125. I was hoping it would be higher. Is he even in this, this tournament, though? I don't know. I don't think that this is actually- the course where Phil asked Bones, right, to tend the flag from 95 yards out to try to chip in. <laughs> That's right. Different tournament, it, but it, same course. I mean, we've mentioned him for all of them, so why not here at 60? I think just wherever you find the best number on him, take that. Well, I like it's funny because he did have his best result at the Masters, but I do like him more at the PGA or this potentially. Yeah, I can see that. Maybe the Open Championship is somewhere to give him a look. All of them. I think Im is going to win in Tokyo, but not a major. Then he gets out of the military. Yeah, then he doesn't. He, he always has, got a medal. He, he just needs to come. So he just needs to stand on the podium. Then he doesn't have to go do his military service. Talk about Sunday pressure. The most important trophy in golf per Tim and. <laughs> I didn't say that. It's the most prestigious <laughs> event you can win in golf. The Olympics. I did not say that. <laughs> British Open, the 149th British Open this year after the cancellation a year ago will once again be at Royal St. George's. Shane Lowry is the defending champion of the Open Championship. It's a par 70, 7,204 yards. Last, This is the 15th time that Royal St. George's has hoped, hosted the Open Championship. The last time it was here was 2011, as Tim alluded to earlier. DJ gagged down the stretch, allowing Darren Clark to win at five under par. DJ was four under par. Ricky and Thomas Bjorn were two under par. Miguel Angel Jimenez tied with Lucas Glover at minus one in that event. 2003, Ben Curtis wins at minus one. So minus five, minus one the last two turns. 1993, Greg Norman won here at minus 13. So like all of these open championship courses, if the wind isn't blowing, it's not all that hard. (laughs) Correct. Although this is a tough one, just the way it's set up. I think it's like the hardest opening hole in all of British Open golf is right here. Uh, that's the one with the kitchen where it's incredibly weird, like the setup of it. So, But nevertheless, uh, I take your point. If there's no wind really up in Sandwich, then the winner's going to have no trouble. But these courses have a history of defending themselves quite well. And you look at the, I mean, who knows what a leaderboard from now 10 years ago can teach us. But... Darren Clark, Phil Mickelson, Dustin Johnson, Thomas Bjorn, Anthony Kim, Ricky Fowler. These are not paragons of consistency, any of these guys. So, particularly not in 2011. So, you forgot Jimenez. I don't know. It seems like you could throw a dart at this tournament. But I laid down a marker this year that Rory would win a major, and I haven't picked it yet. So, I'm going to pick Rory to win here. Rory is the second favorite in this tournament at 10 to 1. Dustin's the favorite at 9 to 1. There is one name you need to be watching for this one Can right now. Can I make now. it? Yeah, go ahead. Can I say it? We bet him last year. Yeah, at half the number. Well, what number are you seeing? What are you seeing? I'm seeing 20. 
We're going to talk after this because I need your help. I got a 40. On Tiger? Yeah. I, I'll take the 40. If there's a major that Tiger can win this year, this is the major. On a book, you make you make bets for me on because I've been kicked off. Okay. And that's where they have the <laughs> Woodland 100 at the U.S. Open. So let's, well, yeah, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to. Get some air after the show. Just, just like Ben Curtis, minus one. Darren Clark, minus five. Tiger's lack of consistency off the tee in terms of distance um, is always going to be a problem until he sorts that out. But obviously, he's going to gear himself to win the Masters. That's going to be the biggest focus that he has. But I think after that, I think Tiger at this point of his career is far too smart to think that he's going to win the U.S. Open. Or a PGA Championship. Or a PGA Championship, based on the way that these courses play now and where his skill set is. But this one is actually Bang. attainable. Let's go. And I think he can win it. I'm with you. We were we did this a year ago. We thought it was just the best shot because of the old leaderboard. Double the number. Darren Clark won. I will fucking go to the grave with Tiger Woods. Now, this could all change in three months when he's like wincing with his back. Maybe, or whatever. Like <laughs> but I'm going to take the chance that in three months, the slow sort of malaise that his game currently feels in, Pat, that we've got time to get out of. And that's where, that's what I am betting on that there's life through Florida, decent showings at majors, and this is 18, 22 to 1. For, yep. for Tiger protection people. And it's it's the opposite of Bryson and Brooks, where if they start playing a little bit poorly, they kind of drop oh, into that will, next tier. The moment it. Tiger plays well, he's the favorite. The moment he shows life, that he's like walking and A to B is fine. Um, yeah, you're not wrong. Right beside him at the same number. I don't know what you're seeing, but read at 40. Yeah. Read. Just driving. like just. It, it's really weird. The way we've talked about all of these tournament so far where like the masters had you know four guys under 10 to one like guys are actual real like even xander's 28 to one here like they're, listen they're, he's competed he lost the, the one molinari won with the crying baby yeah he's been there deep i could get behind 28 to one i don't really want to bet it today no, but i could get the, behind it well the whole point about like again this show is to find sort of the deeper odds that could end up being really good i think this is the perfect one for it because like who I knows, who I knows where people are going to be at this point. But if you can find like, like, would it stun you if this was a Zach Johnson or Kevin Kisner win? No, but I'm not betting no. them. I, I'm not going to bet them either. But like, could this be Snedeker's major? Yes, it could. Like, they're all the, this is such a weird So you're course. telling me Matt Kuchar. That was the name that I was going to end up falling on. <laughs> well, you, you, you couldn't just keep giving these guys that'll no win, stick it to seven feet and, and make a big, some rolls when he's got to. Who do you like? Yeah, and one has to assume if he's in contention that his playing partner won't sell his soul to Satan himself this time to win. So he's got a better chance. He took all poor Spieth took all the money out of our pockets that day. Hideki thirty three. one sense has I guess close that's sense. not sort of where we're looking. No. What's funny is Rose was like fifty to win the Masters, and I'm seeing like thirty here. And there's a few guys and who are like he's an well, Englishman because he's, English, he's an Englishman he's in England. Well, but like that's why that pressure is huge. But like British Open, uh, like Brennan Grace is 80 to 1 to win this tournament. I don't even think he's like qualified for this tournament yet. Neiman is an excellent wind player. So why wouldn't by the way. at 66 just the, like if you think there's life for the Masters, then that means there's life here. Yeah, but, and it's just a pitch and putt. Yeah, but I always think it's Spieth is going to end up being like Fred Couples, where he's going to be like yeah, a course. disaster when he's older, but just he'll show up to Augusta and he'll play well. He'll so, make the cut. Yeah, yeah, people will be rostering him on DK forever. Yeah, and like, yeah, we're in 2041. Like, speed is at So if there's no wind, do you like Brendan Todd or what? If there's no wind? Or sorry, like if it gets... If no, it, if there's wind, I yeah. like... I actually... If there's wind, I kind of like... I mean, I have said Neiman's name on all of these. He's 150 to 1 to win this one. Guy plays awesome in the wind. He's one of the best wind players around. Almost like Woodland. He hits that low stinger. That can get it done for you here. Was this the one where DJ hit it out of bounds, or was that Phil who hit it out of bounds? Or was that the Phil when well, DJ hit it? Out both of them hit it out of yeah, bounds. Yeah. Which, which, <laughs> one, which time are you talking about and which big Both event? of them hit it out of bounds. they've both this, done at that at big moments. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and Clark, on the 18th, I believe it was the 18th hole, just came an inch from burying his approach shot yes. into the top of a bunker, taking a five or six and going to a playoff. He got very lucky. Russell Knox, 250. I think I, I think if I was going to take like a shot on one of those guys, I'd stick in that 150 with like the Kisners and the Snedegers and the Zach Johnsons. Zach Johnson weirdly came inside the top 10 at uh, 
the U.S. Open. This is just the type of event where one of those guys, like an informed Wiesberger, is just right there. It was the name that I just had here. So an informed Wiesberger is battling John Rahm for like (laughs) and Rory for the Open Championship, and and, and somehow Furyk will be in the mix. (laughs) No, but just this guy, like when they get scorching, they're just. It's just four hours of pin stalking. Tim, what about your guy, How Tong? 200 to 1. That seems long. I might despise JB Holmes, but he has played well in Britain. What the heck are his odds, I wonder? I don't, I didn't even see him listed. I, I don't oh, that's one more pertinent pack. He has to be listed. He finished Why in the top Webb 10 Simpson the last time they played the 50 Open. 50 to 1. No, I don't think that he did. I think he shot like 81 on the final day, didn't he? Because remember Brooks was playing with him and Brooks was just like head in his hand. Because Holmes made like triple bogey on the first hole in that final round. I remember that. And Brooks was just like, well, my round's over because this guy's going to spend like 45 minutes hitting his next shot. I do remember him tapping on his watch while walking in front of the camera. (laughs) Paul Casey at 50 and Webb Simpson at 50. Webb Simpson, yes. I do think that Casey's best shot is a PGA champ. Okay, agreed. Uh, my first lean in this range, though, to bring up to you was Webb. I mean, 50 for his world ranking for a guy that when, when driving distance is now not paramount. Yeah. Um, that seems really good. Yeah, these 50s are all kind of interesting. So Even Berger, to me, is just as good a chance of winning this as some of the other majors. Well, you have Webb sitting right there. I like that they're giving Stenson credit at the majors. I, I feel like they don't want to get get caught napping if it just turns out he's good this year again. I guess that they're just factoring it in, like, hey, if he turn if he's if he's shitty, we'll drop his number, but if he's good, we're good with this number. This range right here, and two guys that I mean, someone I think I saw tout Lee Westwood to win this. I, I mean, if, but may, again, if Westwood's going to get one, this is the course to sort go of get the same it reason at. you bet yeah, Tiger and Lee played well at the last Open Championship too. Yeah. Like Lee, and not and even he's been to, playing half yeah. decently, and not even to be rude, it's like. The same kind of reason we're betting Tiger. You're just saying I'm betting Lee Westwood for a bigger number, and he's showing. It's the logic that would have led you to like half yeah. year. It's the logic that would have led you to Darren Clark. Yes, except Tiger is filling that void right now, and Tiger's still way better than all these guys. Yes, yes. Oh, I yes. agree with that. Yes. I agree with that. Um, this range here, though, it, it's funny. Like the Lee Westwood role, although he has a major. No. Is going to be filled by Sergio over the next 10 years. Oh. He is just going to be competitive in random majors. And this feels like and one win, where he can... like race to Dubai's. Yeah, I just win. <laughs> yeah, he'll go over to Saudi Arabia. Well, actually, he doesn't go to Saudi Arabia anymore. He had to go for free last year, so he could be on good terms again, but I'm not sure. He's uh, a father of two now, so let's just hope for the best. Matthew Fitzpatrick, 66 to 1. Sergio Garcia, 66 to 1. Both seem like if Fitz is. And Lee Westwood is 66 to 1, too. Like, if Stenson is like, okay, Stenson's wildly live. Okay, of all those guys, because it happens a lot, Fitzpatrick shows like really cool form at, at the tough wind events, like uh, a Bay Hill, and people get gaga, and then he goes, has plays really well at a WGC or a memorial. People get excited. And it's that, like, oh, heritage, perfect course, dead last. Dead last, but then it's like 66 gets bet down to like 35 the week of the big events. Yeah, I think that, that, I think like this him. will probably be the highest number you'll find him at. Yeah, that's sort of what I was alluding to. I'm not betting it. I like, uh, what do we say, Tiger at 40? Yeah. I, I kind of like this Neiman at 150, though. Okay, think, I'll join you on that. We'll recap these at the end. Neiman was 80 where PGA Championship 2? Uh, U.S. Open, he mm-hmm. was 80. He was in that 80 range with Bubba. I think the only two that I'm going to make, maybe I will make that Neiman 80 to 1 for there. I just feel like he's a really good player. And sometimes investing into good talent and you catch the breakout before you think it's going to happen. Like, remember the year that Rom won at Torrey Pines and all we could talk about was how excited we were to bet him at Phoenix the next week? Because he was definitely going to win. They just won the week before. Like sometimes just if you have an inkling for it, just go for it. That was that was so painful. It was like, no, we're betting Rom in Phoenix next week. Okay. <laughs> then he makes that putt of the it back. He wins of the- Tory Pines. I think that was like Tiger's ret- whatever, never mind. Uh, my card, there's a similar my picks are very similar in name. All right. Uh so actually let's talk about the Ryder Cup. Because you know, it, does this mean it's on a odd year cycle now? Like, is everything back to, what it used, back to what it used to be? I think, yeah. Oh, so it's proper for. Today. So it's like, so it's completely. I didn't say that. I'm just saying. So it's completely changed. Did did Canada get the Presidents Cup? 
Yes, Royal Montreal gets it in the near future. Do you know what year that is? I think it's 2022 or 2024. Let me look. I'll effort that. I think it's 2024. Royal Montreal? What are we talking about? Yeah, Royal Montreal. <laughs> they just announced the President's Cup for Chicago. 2020. They were, um... 2024? It feels like that is something that if people from around the golf community will we'll circle that right now, you can start making your plans if international travel is allowed by 2024. <laughs> That we can we can do our shows live from Montreal that week, and if you I, I, if you want to go have a time, you have a time with us in Montreal. Montreal, it's I love it's, the city. I would love to come there. Me the, and my buddies the, like uh, listen. Ve- nothing beats Vegas. There's things that go on in Vegas. But when you're Canadian and you don't want to go to Vegas, all bachelor parties are in Montreal. Yes. I've been to like five. Bachelor but I parties also want to just stress this even more, and I've stressed it a few times over the year, and it's the little nuggets that I leave without getting into too much detail. I'm now at a point in my life, Pat, where I can go to Vegas, and if one of those flat brim state troopers wants to ruin my life, he can. He can. It's possible. In Montreal, that's impossible. To get to get caught or something to happen with the exact same thing, nothing happens. Your life is fine. Your night will continue as if nothing happened. Therefore, there's also a check mark Montreal. And it, especially if you're American or even British and coming over, I guess the Brits probably wouldn't give a shit about the President's Cup. But hey, if you just want to go have a good time. Oh my God. Your, your money goes a long way in Canada. Put it that way. It yeah. sure does. Um, go, so, go. Yeah. So, yeah. R- Ryder Cup this year, the qualifying is different. So, I'm trying to find out what the rules are. The point system for the American team will include the top six players on the point list as opposed to eight in a normal year. And the remaining six players will be announced as captain's picks this time around. So they're really trying to weed out, like, if Kevin Na wins two tournaments or something like that. Then you're like, oh, sorry, Kev, you're on the outside looking in. But as we Can record- you blame them? They keep getting their doors blown off by the Europeans. They got to do something to change things up. Well, they, they did the perfect thing this time around. Uh, it's at Whistling Straits. Which yes. really plays to the advantage of the American team. This is a bomb and gouge type of course. Yes, Keimer won a major there, but look who he was facing. Uh, Dustin should have gotten to the playoff. He, who was in the playoff? It was Bubba. Bubba. It was Bubba. Wasn't there someone else in the playoff too? I believe it was just Bubba and uh, Keimer with Dustin on the outside looking in. Yeah. So, and then the last time that we saw it here, Spieth put in a good charge, but day one, Finau played really well. It was all the big hitters uh, and good iron players. The top six in the standings as of January, listen to this team. Dustin, Bryson, Justin Thomas, Brooks, Morikawa, Xander. With the next six currently in the standings, Webb, Reed, Finau, Wolf, Berger, and Cantlay. That could be your team. Like who, Done. Who's well, except Tiger's got to be on there somewhere. No, he doesn't. I don't think Tiger has yes, to be. He does. No, he doesn't. There's no. a 0.000% chance that NBC A could accept Tiger not being picked to the team if he's healthy, or B, that his friend Steve Stricker wouldn't pick him. Uh, I want to say this. I do believe the format and being able to rest guys and hide guys, I think he, I, I do think they say one of those guys buzz off, Tiger's coming. What? In the same way, hold on. In the same way for years, maybe undeservedly, when we found out who was on the team, like you had those locks, your Justins, your Dustins, your your Bright, like those guys then campaigned to Stricker. We want, we want Phil's paying for the suits. <laughs> Phil's paying for this. Bring Like, no, 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 no. You're bringing Tiger. You tell Cantley to fuck off. Like, I'm just whoever it is. Morgan. Agreed. Like, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. You tell Daniel Berger, bye. Like, Tiger plays. He wins his single. You put him with a partner. The number one player in the world will probably be Justin Thomas at the end of the year, and he's going to demand Tiger come. Okay. NBC would have a meltdown if he didn't pick Tiger. A that, meltdown. That is true. Uh, guys, but I don't. But I agree. Like on Tiger's, surface, on paper, it doesn't feel like he should be there. But but it's deeper. I'm very curious to see what ends up happening. Like you know how your Chargers in football don't like have any analytics whatsoever. Yeah, they play I know. football like it's 1951. Correct. And then there are other teams that are very progressive. It's kind of like the chasm between the U.S. team and the oh, European team. Yeah, yeah. Like the strategy that the European team uses to win Ryder Cups. Like they're playing. 6D chess. Basically, they're playing chess while the U.S. is eating crackers. Is the best way to compete. Even their grooming, even their 
Jeez. And the big difference between my team in that Ryder Cup event and the other was that I felt our team played like a team <laughs> and actually attempted to try to like strategize the team to, you know, to maximize our potential. I captain? never lost a point. Yeah. No, I was not. But uh, I, 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 I drew two and I won another. I, I did. Good not, for you. Uh, I would like I was to not say on the losing side of any. Um, but oh, just the, the, the thought that goes into their matchups and the types of players that they pick for their team. And it's actually kind but of it a, also, but it's kind of a bonus for the U.S. this year that you only get locked into the six spots, not the eight spots. Like I love Webb Simpson. He's one of the top 10 players in the world. It's a shitty course for him. Yeah, but I'd be. I don't think they'll tell him to go home. Probably but, not. But, but the, you're right. The you're European right, you're team right. would do something like that. I don't know. They're gonna be. They, they they might be stuck with Lee Westwood. But but to your yeah, further, but they might get stuck with him. But if it came down to picking him or not picking him, they probably wouldn't pick him. Okay, you're probably right because like Bobby Mack is probably better suited to be here. Thomas Peters yeah. is better Thomas suited. Dietrich. Dietrich. They're all better for this team. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I I agree with uh, Wiko Nybar. I don't know about that. I'm just. Um, <laughs> But he only gets uh, Patrick so, only gets three picks. Yes, hold, but what so I want to say to you, so Pat, they're keeping theirs normal. Yeah, Padraig only gets three picks, and then the rest is the top four in the race they, in Dubai, they, and the no, top five not qualified in points. So no. here, so here's what it is right now: European side, Fleetwood, Rom, Rory, Victor Perez, Ugh. and then it's Willett, Fitzpatrick, Westwood, Hatton, and Weisberger. Let me go bet the moon on the American. That's it, right and like just some of the guys yet, on this. The like, Americans will be underdogs because no, they have no, to. no, they will They're not be like be. minus one ninety. They're always underdogs. No, they aren't. No, no. Always, we, they we, weren't we, at we, Hazel they, team. They, they weren't underdogs. They were huge favorites, and, and they fucking, were favored in France. Yeah, you dumb. Yeah, we we bet the Euros at plus one. They were favored in France. They were favored at Hazel team. They're favored. That's part of what makes them losing that much more embarrassing. This is not even worth arguing. Now, Pat, to continue your point on on there's just such a fundamental difference in the programs. Even the ascension to captain is exponentially different. There's like a training process you go through as a to be a European captain, while to be an American captain, you're just the best player who hasn't done it yet. Yep. That's literally the, the standard. The Americans are currently minus 150 favorites. And that seems short based on what you the line the lineup yeah, you the, read. I would definitely take the Euros. I don't think the, the US can. Do you want to bet me? I, I would say that this number, if like let's say the teams it were what they are right now, that this goes off at like minus two twenty. Yeah, if this if this tournament was next week and those rosters were just announced, that number, yeah, it's like one ninety. My instantly. only an anxiety is I think it's fifty fifty this tournament gets played. That's all. You think they're going to fucking Tokyo to play a, an Olympics, but you don't think a Ryder Cup with 20 guys is happening? Because I don't think the fans will be to the level the Ryder Cup wants for it, which is why it was canceled this year. Tokyo can do a bubble and is going to do a bubble probably for its tur tournament. I'm just saying to get the massive crowds in no. early September, when, when, I don't I don't see it when, happening. When, Tokyo doesn't want crowds, man. They don't want like the exuberant. They want crowds, but they're going to bubble things. Yeah, so. but when, when you see at the beginning of February that Roger Goodell pumps the Tampa Stadium full of people, the Ryder Cup in the end of September is not going to have a problem. Yeah, in, in the Midwest. We'll see. The Midwest where you're outside. Come on. Okay. I, I hope I'm wrong. What would you set the line at, considering you just thought the Euros were going to be favored in this event? I would have said the Euros should be like minus 120 because they just played better golf. And they crushed the Americans last time. Wasn't yeah, they, even close. They, even call they, it close would be embarrassing. But, but they crushed, as underdogs, they crushed the Americans at a course specifically tailored yeah. to European players and not the bomb and gouge style of most American players who are on that team. Like, not a good Bryson course. Do you remember Bryson like, couldn't Nationale. even play? What's that? Couldn't even play. He played one thing in his singles. They, like, benched them because he just can't move around there. Now they're literally just going to air show. Literally air show. Yeah, they might as well just turn this into a long drive contest. Who can win? It should be fun. It should be a fun place to Yeah, don't get me wrong. You're, it you're, is a tough you're, course. Your you're Fleetwoods and, and your guys, they get like, how do you win a match? You make like a bunch of 20-footers, and all of a sudden you're stealing points. That is very much in play. Hey, it's the same reason to have Reed on the team. Like, you're not going to leave Reed off the team. I really don't think that's going to happen. Reed. Uh, no, of course not. Like, if Reed isn't one of the six guys, like, he has to be a captain. I'd player. riot. And okay. you know Stricker's from Wisconsin as the captain? Oh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Over under mentions. He's the it's like only super wild card week. captain to never win a major or something. Well, 
What if Phil wins, like, what if Phil remains undefeated on the Champions Tour? Do you put him on the team, Tim? No, I would not. He be, he should be a vice captain. Phil He's is a going great guy. to I, I, don't, captain. I don't think Phil would ever be a vice no, captain. No, Phil, exactly. There's I do no think program. he would. He loves this tournament. Maybe, he yeah, loves yeah, it. Yeah, right. but he, he, Phil doesn't like being vice anything. Yeah, but he just wants to yeah, ride know, around a golf cart. He, he's not he'd like also on like schedule, to be just captain. doing whatever he wants. He's he'd like going, to be captain in 20... Beth Page, whatever year now Beth it is Page, to go to Beth Page, Black yeah. versus Ian or whatever it is. Yeah. That'll be fun. Beth Page, Black versus Ian Poulter. And it's like Phil one of his home courses. Polk. Yeah, one of his 24 home courses. Yeah, whatever. Do you ever win at Beth Page, Black? No, but he came close. Sick home course, though. Famous <laughs> Shinnecock is like a home course. He has several almost home courses. Yeah, he has a couple of home courses where he never wins. Yeah. All right, let's make our picks. I got two. Okay, we'll recap Three, the bets. Actually. We'll recap the bets. I'm going to bet Bobby Mack at the PGA Championship, 150 to one. I'm going to bet Ryan Palmer, 200 to one to win the U.S. <laughs> Open at Torrey Pines. I will bet Tiger at 40 to one to win the British Open, and I will also bet Neiman at 150 to one to win the british open those will be the four futures that i make right now and as always during the course of our regular shows uh, on mondays every single week uh, if we do have something we'll either tweet it out or we'll mention it on the show and we'll pile up the card as we go along but those are going to be my main four none for the masters i didn't like any of those masters odds joffrey what did you just read that anthony lynn isn't really fired no <laughs> Someone literally went into my DMs to say, I don't know if you know this, but do you know that Brian Debo and Tom Telesco went to high school? Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm not sure. Thanks for the information. I'm only talking about it for four months. Okay. Two months. <laughs> Gary Woodland to win the U.S. Open 100. Oh, I like that one, too. Yeah, we're talking off air. Tiger Woods to win the Open at 40. Woodland Woods. Um, there's a Sung J 65, I want to say PGA championship that I like as well. And I kind of lost focus because I think Neiman could be in play in a bunch of majors. So I'm going to go back and, and relook at it. You mentioned a 150, 150 at the British. That's Open. like, because that's like blindly double the 80 that I liked at one of the, um, at the US American Open. based ones. I'll probably go with that, but I could even get behind those eighties yeah. at, at, at an, Adam, I drafted him in our league. I might have overdrafted him, but I'm expecting a big, big year. So, Tim, are you going to make any future bets, or you just want to pick winners of each of these events? Well, I do think a future bet of Berger, or sorry, of uh, Casey at the PGA Championship is a nice little piece to take. I think those odds will make me shorter by then. And what was he? 50? Uh, 50, yeah. And I do like Berger at 40 to win the Masters, but he's I don't gonna care be, to bet that. that. He's going to be 35, be 35 yeah. if he's playing. Yeah, I don't care but to My picks would be JT at Augusta. And then I picked, uh, oh my goodness, who did I pick at the PGA Championship? Uh, Matthew Wolf at the PGA Championship. I picked Rom at the U.S. Open. And then I picked Rory at the uh, the Open Championship. Okay. Interesting. What do you got? Who's your pick for the Masters, Jeff? It's just a pick. You don't have to bet it. John Rom To win the Masters? Yeah. PGA? Justin Thomas. U.S. Open, John Rahm. <laughs> Big year for John Rahm. <laughs> British Open, Tiger Woods. Tiger Woods. And I will go with... I, too, am going to take Justin Thomas. Nah, he's going to win the Masters. Yeah, let's have some fun with this. Justin Thomas to win the Masters. Justin Thomas to win the PGA Championship. To win the U.S. Open, I'm going to take Ryan Palmer. Stop. <laughs> you're win. just, you're not, you're not. And to win the British Open, I'm going to take Joaquin Neiman. You're going to type that in a document and I know. put it out there. I also, I bet you guys didn't it. pick DJ to win anything. Why do you hate DJ so much? 
I also why like, do you hate Bryson? I don't think wrong. Yeah. Act- you ever pick Bryson? Bryson will show, show you guys up. He knows better. I actually don't think Rom is going to win the U.S. Open. I think there's going to be so much pressure. He's going to like might even be the favorite. So I kind of but don't. if he's think already be like Rory, Rory in Ireland. But I guess yes. Once he's Open? won the Masters, he's pressure. Cat- yeah, yeah, like it's true. He goes into that with a with a free roll. So you're right. I'll stick to it. Um, my favorite bet though is is the Woods and Woodland U.S. Open for Gary uh, Open Championship for Tiger. 140. We're talking once you hit stop. Okay. That will do it on the Pat Mayo Experience. Majors preview. Had some fun talking about majors. You can follow Jeff on Twitter at gfeinberg17. You can also follow Tim at Tim and August. Tim and August. Not my Twitter handle. Best of luck to everyone in the one and done. I really hope you guys all do well. Best of luck. The, the goal is just to be Tim. Are we going to run back our one and done tournament? The three of us? Yeah. For sure. The winner of the three of us, 100 bucks. Yeah, but I got to be able to pick first each time because I'm at a significant disadvantage. It's not fair that you get to pick first every single time. Yeah, that... Okay, but... I, I, it's you like just, you guys you, are scratch you, golfers, and I'm five. Oh, I, I, I have like see, a seven. No, 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 no. The whole thing about the you one and done. A stroke each nine. The one thing about the one and done is no, like even a layman golf fan, like no, can can do it. We're not like yeah, man. There's something me and Pat okay, so what can tell you about that? Daniel Berger that you don't okay. know. So when it's not my turn to pick first, am I supposed to just wait until you guys? No, are we're letting you pick after. first. We're letting you pick first because it's just easier for us, and we don't want to. We do our show Monday, and it's easier. But don't pretend that we're not like giving you a big advantage to just let you pick first every week. When sometimes, despite there being so many golfers, there is a lot of groupthink. Okay. You can follow me at the PME. Everyone should become a member at FantasyNational.com right now. Best stats, the best tools. It's the best in the business. Many people say it. Fantasynational.com slash Mayo. Get yourself 20% off. You can check out my work up on DKPlaybook.com. Subscribe to Mayo Media Network on YouTube. And please subscribe to the audio podcast, Apple, Stitcher, Spotify, wherever you download your podcast, you can find the Pat Mayo Experience. I'm Pat Mayo. I'll see you next time. Pat Mayo Experience! Experience!